podcast. And yeah, this is episode one of what I'm going to call the Monkey's Paw podcast. I already explained to you guys the reasoning behind the title name um, and basically what it means and why I chose it and all that sort of stuff. And the point of this uh, podcast is to basically go over the landscape of entertainment, you know, speak a bit about storytelling, writing craft and stuff like that. Um, three topics I wanted to talk about. I've just been in the ether for the fa- uh, past couple weeks, and I was just wondering what you guys' opinions of it were. So I just brought you guys together to speak on it because like me, question you guys, on the title. Go ahead. Question on the title. Um. Do you want to tell the audience or uh, let them figure out that reference? <laughs> I mean, I, I guess I could tell the audience, right? So, uh, there's two lessons. Of, well, the ending lesson of the story of the monkey's paw is to not tempt fate and to be careful what you wish for. But uh, throughout the story, if you read it, you'd notice that the the point of the paw is that it grants wishes. But what the users of the paw don't know is that it comes at a great cost. Um, so in a way it symbolizes what Hollywood has done to alienate a, their fan base, uh, their fan bases. Um, they wanted the people who dared to notice all the bizarre changes they were making to the media to not watch it in the event they don't like it. And when we do, they blame us. Um, they wanted us to go away and it cost them billions in revenue. Um, so You've seen what happened with Bud Light. It could just as easy, easily happen to any other company. You've seen what happened with uh, Marvel and DC. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's kind of why I'm calling it the Monkey's Paw podcast. Any thoughts? Yeah, that'll do. That'll do. Cool. I'm going to open with our first topic. And I guess I'll start with the... I guess I'll start with the writer strike and what that means. Because the only thing we really care about is what that means for us. But the article is going to go into kind of what it means for Hollywood as a whole. I read a little bit of it. Oh, boy. Four weeks old, but it should it should get the point across. Um, About four months hey, old. Jesus. Hey, what? Go ahead. Yeah, I've just been like watching like so many videos like talking about the strikes it's it's just kind of satisfying to see like e- eating popcorn and watching it all go go down yeah because that's the thing like what what are they really depriving us of like nothing they've been making has been any good so like <laughs> you see people on twitter saying oh my god guys do you not realize how much stuff is getting delayed as a result of a writer's strike and it's like I hope that shit lasts forever <laughs> like <laughs> nothing in the Bye, nothing have in a beautiful the, time. Yeah, nothing in the uh Marvel lineup looks any good at all. I think there's some new Aquaman movie coming out that I don't care about. Like there's just a whole bunch of things that they have planned that no one's excited for. And it's and it's because of the years they've spent alienating their fan bases. They don't really care about source material. They hate you. They hate the way you live your life and your fandom is toxic. So like what's the point of anticipating any of that? I, why why give money to people who make it expressly clear that they don't want me there so oh no noise is in the chat what, what? oh no <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> what's, what's up noise no. he, oh he's at the he's watching the podcast at the gym oh d he's like today's I mean, back day <laughs> man. yeah so noise this I mean. is yeah, noise. This is a. I started a new channel, uh, and this podcast I'm starting is going to be talking about entertainment instead of politics. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's that's what I'm doing now. <laughs> yeah, hopefully uh, you enjoy what's going on. Dope, dope. So I gotta talk so to you to later. I hope you're again. still. I hope you're still. Uh, a widget just went off. I don't even know what it what it did, but anyway, I hope you're still uh, widget, widget. no a widget like uh, whenever I think he followed or subscribed or something. I don't know what he did, but I hope you're still in the studio, man. Um, your stuff's still good. I still have all the old beats you gave me, and I'll definitely be using them. So. <laughs> you be in 
in there every now and then. Yeah. I, I, I see his stuff on Instagram, so he'll be in there. Oh. Now, whether he's actually doing anything, that's another question. I don't know. <laughs> he's just sitting there. there. <laughs> This shade. <laughs> oh man. But yeah, let me uh let me start reading a little bit of it. Like we're obviously gonna stop and talk if we see anything, you know. But it, it says here, if you're a fan of television and movies, you very likely seen news about a na- uh, nationwide WGA strike for writers in the entertainment industry. While it can be frustrating to learn that your favorite series may have come to a stop or could be affected by this in the future, what the writers are asking for largely benefits audiences as well over the coming years. Um, yeah, but yeah, that's what I'm us, saying. Like, to that's, the, us bad writers. That's what I'm <laughs> saying. Like, <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry to interject so quickly, but it's like, wait, really? <laughs> no, I had the same thought. It's like, how does it benefit us outside of the fact that you're not producing crap work right now? As I see it, it benefits us more saying. for the strike to continue. Like, it, like this all this all rolls That's up. That's what I was saying. I'm like, was... go ahead. You you finish first. Sorry, I was just saying like that's what I was saying as you were reading. It largely benefits audiences as well. Yeah, it benefits us because we don't get wow. any more bad writers. <laughs> exactly, and this all this is all going to come to a head with our with the uh, final topic that I'm going to introduce because it's going to detail the landscape of storytelling. Uh, as it pertains to entertainment as a whole, as well as, you know, uh, comic books and novels, too. But that that for already we're, we're coming in on a lie. Like, I don't see how this benefits audiences at all. If you're someone who's a fan of the pre-established uh, series from source material and stuff like that, I, I don't know. Even the original stuff is bad, like completely new IPs are just garbage because they can't they can't just entertain you to have to preach to you about something. Two sentences for that article to lie to us. <laughs> good, good job. <laughs> Somewhere in there. Uh, who are the groups on either side of the w, the WGA strike? If you've seen anything about the writer strike, you've likely read about the WGA. The Writers Guild of America was founded in 1933, and almost all television and film writers, along with writers of some scripted podcasts and other digital media, are members of the WGA. It's the WGA's basic agreement contract that writers work under. Though you may find an extremely small number of exceptions, all of the scripted television shows you watch are written by writers who are members of the WGA and the Guild works to negotiate contracts for writers, ensure fair wages and benefits for its members, and to help protect the creative and economic rights of its members. Um, it's a union. Uh, I, have, I, I have a question yeah, about it's this. A, it's a union. <laughs> Go ahead. So I have a question about this. So how are... Th- I've been wondering, how do they measure, like, wages for writers in this industry? Like, do they count, like, number of hours they spend on a project? Do they count, Dude. like, like with uh, book publishers, where they count, like, the number of uh, words per, per cent? I mean, even before you get into page rates, uh, you have to have credentials to show that you're worth whatever they're paying you. And the thing with these mm-hmm. writers in particular, the reason why they have to strike at all it's because they're clearly not worth what they're asking for. <laughs> they're not. The revenue that they're requesting from these companies isn't fucking there. They've been making no money. They've been losing money. They've been hemorrhaging money, dude. That's why this is so funny. Like, it, what are you asking for? <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing to get. <laughs> That's without even discussing page rates. The way that you earn a high wage as a talented contractor when it comes to writing, art, music, or anything like that is by having a catalog, a portfolio, and fan reception. That's the only way. You have to have been on a project that people actually want to fucking watch, read, listen to, whatever. You have to have some degree of popularity to match your talent. Or even just talent. Fuck popularity. Are you even good at what you do? <laughs> like, are you even good? <laughs> this is why this is this is why this shit is oxymoronic. Emphasis on moronic. This shit, it, it, they're eating themselves because <laughs> like, you want more money, but you don't have the ability to earn more money. Like, I don't get it. Like, I don't know. 
Like, I don't know how people can get so entitled <laughs> in this, like, in that kind of lineup, like, eh. Okay, you're so far, where... like, down the food, you're so far down the food chain, how do you have that much? Well, technically, uh... the, the talent shouldn't be that far down the food chain, but the thing is, the reason why they get so entitled is because they think they should, be, be, okay, because they put so much time into working for these companies, they feel like, they deserve a higher wage, and that would make sense if the quality of your work matched your time and service. But it doesn't. It clearly, it clearly fucking doesn't. I guess they never had anyone like to actually bunk them over the head and be like, "Hey, this ain't good." I mean, they, just they never had an editor. Yeah, they, I mean, they usually don't get told no or anything like that. Everyone that they get, every actor or someone on their team that they get that says, "Hey, this is kind of shit. You might want to rewrite it." They, they just get they just they just push them out they don't want to hear criticism of their work they want to tell the story they want to tell instead of the story that fans actually oh. want to hear oh god i hate hearing i hate hearing that every time i, I every time i look <laughs> at a behind the scenes of a marvel movie i mean dude oh. they, they say it all the time you can set your fucking watch to it like <laughs> i know I, I know it just oh it just never gets less aggravating as a fan Oh, man. Let me continue on for a little bit more and get past this section here. Oh, okay. Uh, on the other side of the negotiation table is the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers, uh, Producers, AMPTP, a group that represents over 350 production companies in the country, including Water, uh, Warner Brothers Entertainment, Universal Studios, Paramount, Netflix, Walt Disney Studios, Amazon, Sony, and many others. As the current contract between the WGA and the AMPTP was set to expire on May 1st, 2023, representatives from the AMPTP and WGA have been meeting to try and agree on a new contract, but the negotiations were not successful and there was no agreement at the time of the current contract's expiration. And so a strike was called for all members nationwide to stop work immediately. You know, a lot of people Question have brought this about up. the AMPTP. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I, I'm sorry I keep interrupting you, okay? <laughs> but I mean, no, we all I have just want to ask, like, why? Them. Okay, well, I just want to ask, why is everything, like, so closely connected to each other, like, with AMPTP, like, why well, is everything, like, wrapped around one certain, why is everything wrapped around, like, one, uh, uh what's the word, let, let me think of the analogy. Like, one Dark Tower, uh, uh, Stephen King reference. <laughs> One yeah, tower like, to rule them all. One ring to rule them all. <laughs> yeah, the AMPTP is basically the Legion of Doom. <laughs> basically. And the reason why everything is so closely married in this cocktail of fucking debauchery is because it's not necessarily the Corpo's fault. Because I highly doubt that the Corpo has forced them to sign themselves over to a union. The problem uh, for the actual workers is that they they pretty much cut themselves off at their knees because they don't have the freedom to leave and find work elsewhere. They're under contract. Um, they don't even have the liberty to start their own project. Or Actually, I don't really know how it would work for them to start work independently. I'm pretty sure they can't do that either. So, yeah, that's oh, why... That's... Uh... What did you say, bitch? No, I would say if they're under contract, then most likely they can't just start their own project. I'm pretty sure that that's tied into terms and stuff like that of their of their uh contract. Bro, I would never sign away my creative freedom, bro. Like, <laughs> why would they do that? Like, oh man. I, well, I, wait, 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 wait. That, that, that speaks to the whole perceived legitimacy type thing. You know, they they get uh, yeah, that's... contracts with these big studios and things like that because they feel like, hey, that's where that's where the money is at. And they get all these projects from these major studios, and they end up finding out later on down the line, oh, uh, this isn't exactly what I hoped for it to be. But you're stuck because you've already signed you've already signed the contract, and now you got to sit and either wait it out or do what they're doing right now. Right. But here's the thing, though. To like, bounce off what you were saying, Vidge. Yeah, you first. I'll go wait, next. Hang, wait, I'll... I'll... Uh, to bounce off what you were saying, dude, I I get that. Like, there's a it's like that mindset of like the California dream thing, where all all the the celebrities, all the 
uh, all the writers, like all the fame, it, all the rising of ranks gets done over there. If you want to work at somewhere entertainment, right. that's where all the movies are made. That's where all the right. Oh, and to also kind of branch this off, it's like uh, New York too, because New York is like the the state where all the books novels get published, apparently. From yeah, my ex- from what I've been learning, and even when I was in college, uh, you know, during taking writing classes. A question that uh, one of my professors asked me a long time ago was, uh, "Are y'all, if y'all move to publish or ever want to publish books, are y'all willing to move out of state? You know, like to like submit books to publishers." And that's because in the list of publishers that he gave us or that he helped us look up, a lot of them were co- were connected to New York. And you know, there's always like the other states that like, kind of branched out. But like a good chunk of them were in metropolitan New York, and but I think thing, it's because of that that mindset. The thing is, with both of the things uh, y'all were saying, is that I can completely understand why a creative would be compelled to seek out opportunities in these places. The thing I don't understand is why they would sign away their creative freedom and essentially be under contract to the point where they can't, like they can't, they don't have the freedom to seek work work elsewhere because, like. I, I've been acquainted with a lot of creative people, like a lot of people who are very confident in their abilities and things like that. Like, even if they didn't really think right off that they would like see success as an independent, none of them I've talked to have ever like had anything against trying at the very least. Like, like I know people who, who have to do what they do creatively as, as much as they need to breathe. Like these dudes are extremely talented. Like and the idea of being under the heel of, some fucking union would never appeal to them. So I, I don't understand because like the way I see it, the reason why they signed themselves under a union is because they thought it was some form of like job security. And honestly, I don't believe that they really thought um, highly of themselves and their abilities because generally people who do, they don't, they don't sign away their creative freedom. They just don't. Like, this is in line with people like that. Most of them would either go off and try to make it on their own or do something else in the meantime while doing their passion on the side. So this is why this is so weird to me. I don't maybe it's the nepotism thing. And I I have to do my research on that because a lot of people say that uh, most of the reason people get hired to these positions isn't even necessarily because of their talent or credentials. It's because someone they know got them in. It's true. There is a level of nepotism. Yeah. So also, uh, to kind of bank, to kind of bank off like what you were saying, Venom. Uh, I, I think uh, there's two things I thought of. Um, because I've kind of been there like early on when I was trying back when I wanted to like decide like what I wanted to do with my life. Yeah. Uh, when I was looking at, because you know I want to do writing. One of the things, uh, the only thing I had to look forward to at the time was just, you know, the big names, the. the well, at the time, Stephen Stephen King was like one of the big names, and as just if you're if you've been in a place where all you've seen is just you know people who published to big places and gone famous, that's mm-hmm. kind of where your mind goes to like, oh, that's where I need to go. That's where uh, I can make a name for myself. You know, because you don't hear of people who like until just recently, you know, made whole entire successes uh on their own feet and even then like other independents in the past like um what's his name uh i think was todd mcfarland uh like an independent before uh an, an independent creator Shit, i cannot tell uh, you when he was making spawn oh was wait no project or was that a- um uh okay this is the perfect example of that because that actually goes into what i was saying before like todd mcfarland like i was saying i can see why a creator would be compelled to go work for these people but todd mcfarland and uh, the creator of pit i forgot his name they were smart enough to keep the creative rights to the characters they invented and go on to mm-hmm. uh you know break away from uh, the companies that were attached to and be able to use those IPs to their own ends. So that that's what I mean. Like, I understand I understand why you would go somewhere to gain experience uh, uh, in a, a resume and a creative backing uh, using the names and, of uh, um, institutions, but the signing away your creative also, uh, Go ahead. Also, I feel like there's a there's a contracting uh, that for the contracting. I feel like maybe I'm wrong, but 
I feel like it's like the terms and service kind of thing. Like maybe people don't re- either didn't read it through all the way or what or it was worded so specifically. Get a lawyer. With, like who has no business experience. You with no business experience in your life would not realize or would not realize upon reading it what you're essentially signing yourself away to. Bro, if I get a if I get a contract. And maybe stack maybe of... you couldn't afford a lawyer or maybe you didn't think oh, hell, to get no. a lawyer for this. Nah, bro. No. Like, I feel like that also comes into play because, like, I'm I'm be honest with them because I I get this myself. <laughs> when I was starting like looking into this, I was very naive into this into this kind of business. You just goes deep, but you could have been like, signing yourself. You could have been signing. You could have been signing yourself into slavery, bro. You, t- bro. Nah. If I see something, exactly. Had I had <laughs> I not exactly exactly uh, like had I not been looking like actually looking. At like pros and cons, like, and also just asking questions about like the vagueness of contracts because oh my god, why is every contract so vague? Like every time I ask about a contract rule, like, I, I get real vague answers that like no one knows the answer to. No one knows every like specific detail about a contract. Like how much rights do would I get or would I keep? How much percentage would I keep or like how much? Oh, you mean as a in, as an independent? How much of the brand do I keep for myself? <laughs> oh, oh, never when mind. When does it never end? You're talking about something else. Yeah, you're not talking about an independent contract. You're talking about um, like being under. No, 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 no not independent. Company. I mean, like, yeah, like yeah. when you're go- when you're publishing a book. Yeah. So publish like a popular publishing studio. You want to discuss with terms with a lawyer present because the thing, is, even if you, yeah. I, I I hate motivating people to get into debt, but like this would be for a good reason. Even if you don't really have the money for a lawyer, like you're likely going to get the money because like if this company who's worth millions and billions of dollars is coming to you for your IP, chances are they see something that you don't. And if you want to sign on to be a publisher for them or uh, to be published by them, excuse me, uh, it could do you some good to get a lawyer to, to look at it because you want to make sure or you get a agent. good deal. Yeah. Or yeah, either one. Like you want to make sure you get a good deal. And yeah. Because I, I know that's over. what they told me a lot in the. Uh... Oh, sorry. No, I was done. Go ahead. I was going to say, because uh, I know what they also told me in college. Look, like, you know, look for look for an agent once you once you finish writing, you know. Look for an agent because an agent will go through the contracts and, you know, demand more. Basically make more money out of you. Yeah, they're going to a lot of times, especially if you're a new uh, new blood, an agent's going to know your worth more than you do. Uh, just because like they have, they've worked with people who have, um, worked in the industry longer than you have. Uh, but yeah, um, to end that there, I'm going to go ahead and read a little bit more of it. Let me see where, where did I leave off of EJ strike? Yeah. What the hell do they want? I'm pretty sure they want more pay, but what else? The writers guild has published a list of proposals that they requested to be part of the new contract with the AMPTP. And they've released the AMPTP's replies to their members publicly. Those specific proposals and the counteroffers can be read here. I'm not clicking that. There are a few themes within the writer's request that led to the WGA strike, asking for better pay and stability for writer. Yeah, I, I, I figured. So in the event, I yeah. go go ahead. <laughs> I was saying that's what it always comes down to. One, one question. <laughs> <laughs> so in the event. Oh, wait. What is it, man? I mean, bitch, bitch. I was saying, oh, even they, they want more money despite not being worth the money. Exactly. Like, <laughs> but, but there's no money there. There's no money. Like, <laughs> there's no money. <laughs> like, bro, y'all, like, for example, they want, they want, they want shit from Disney for just for an, an example, right? They want shit from Disney. I'm just making up a, a, a scenario here. Right? Yeah. Yeah. When we look at mm-hmm. what's happening to Disney right now, Jesus Christ. Well, their stocks are like un- uh, under 80 bucks now. You had um, Bob Iger. He was trying to sell a third of Disney's assets. Huh. So you got that going on. And until we see some more updated information, they're in, they're in trouble. So why in the world would you be begging them for more money? Where's the money coming from? 
Where's the money gonna come from? Where's the money coming from? It's not coming from their films. It's not really coming from their theme parks or any of their other uh, things where they can get like residual income from. So where is it coming from? Guy, like, oh, bitch, uh, I was gonna say, on to the oh my god, yellow. No, I dude, it. bro, I get it though. Like, I get it. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So you had you had those things going on, and then the market speaks for itself. They weren't they weren't really fulfilling with customer demand and things like that too. So other contractors were coming in and taking their business. Right. I couldn't, I, I couldn't imagine it, bro. I saw that video of that dude uh, ranting, bro. Like, he, like I, I felt so bad for him, dude. Like, like at least he, a, a, man. Oh my god, I can't imagine. Like, I can't. And that, that's, that's why. I, <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, I'm, I'm just laughing. Go ahead. I was just like, and that's why, why I don't, I don't understand the strike, like. Their end goal that that's exactly why they were like, yeah, we're just gonna let them, we're just gonna we're just gonna bleed them dry. That's essentially what they're saying. We're, we're just gonna bleed them dry. We have nothing to give them. <laughs> we can, we we have nothing to give them, and they're just gonna strike until uh, until they give up and come back. Until they die or die, either one. That's they said it without saying it. They said it without saying it. <laughs> Basically, like. <laughs> oh, uh, Vooch, I was gonna say, you know how you were talking about Disney earlier? Well, last I heard, their stocks are under 80 bucks now. That says a lot. <laughs> it says a fuck ton. For Disney? Yeah, that, that says a lot. That is so much. <laughs> and God mm. knows how much more money they're gonna lose if, if they keep, uh, trying to lawsuit war against Florida. Yeah. There's so much stuff that's going on. <laughs> Don't really want to acknowledge, and they're gonna have to acknowledge those things, man. That's just the that's just the reality of it. They can try and avoid this type of stuff. They can try and make up, you know, issues and stuff like that. But reality is reality, bro. You just man, bro. Fine, bro. That's it. Dude, I just read the part about AI, and I got a rant, bro. I'm so fucking. I'm so fucking tired of these artists and these writers complaining about AI. AI will never be able to comp compete with a human when it comes to artistic expression. They, they would never be able to deliver an experience like a human could when it comes to the depiction of, of uh, uh, the human form or uh, depiction of the human experience when it comes to writing. They couldn't hope to do it. The only people who are afraid of AI taking their job are people who suck at their job. Period. Uh, <laughs> AI, AI, a, a machine can't relate to a human being. The only way a machine would surmount uh, human uh, human expression and essentially what is the soul of a human being, because that's what you're giving up whenever you create something, is if we had literally had Ultron, if we had Hank Pym fuse himself with a fucking machine and then there was a human consciousness in this machine. That's the only way AI would be able to able to compete with human beings. That's the only way. I don't understand the the hype 
and the concern. I understand the uh, the authors because you're using their likeness and their voice and shit like. I understand that, but when it comes to this art shit and this fucking this writing shit, have you have you read an AI generated story before? It's fucking trash. It's garbage. It's not good. <laughs> They have no understanding of literary fucking tools. Chekhov's gun, a red herring, suspense, none of that shit. They don't, they don't, they can't fathom it. I, they can't do it. They can't do it. They can barely spell. <laughs> you see that with the, I was gonna say, uh, fun. You see that with the little uh, thing that everybody likes. The, uh, what is that thing? Chat, what's the, what is that thing called? Chat GPT. The chat GPT. Or should I, or, or, or chat should I, chat CCP more like it, but anyway. You have somebody show you something from that thing, and it's like, dude, you see all these damn errors in here? And like, the thing can't even spell right. No, you it know, can't. Let alone, let alone construct like a, a, a actual sentence or something like that that you can. Like really read and be like, oh, okay, now I understand what's going on here. But that dog on run on sentences or whatever, it's still like, nah, it's okay. Bro, they have they, they have people who uh, are paid to correct the deficiencies in AI. Like, imagine being paid. Well, I was gonna s- <laughs> like wait. I was gonna say, guys. Um, but for, no, writing wise, I don't see like that many people complaining about it. Like, aside from you know the audience that are part of the WGA, but I've noticed there's like a lot of kind of civil war going on with like, like artists, like, uh, like, like drawing, like animation artists, you know, those type of people. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've seen that. Too. Those now, now them, I see them beefing with AI and I kind of get it, especially since that one, uh, who was it that awarded an AI, uh, drawing like the prize? That's just not le- of, like, the that's human shit. That's just not legitimate, bro. I, like if anyone if anyone gives AI or award over a human like we have to okay, we have to assume that this human artist is even good at what the fuck they do, right? Like let's let's be fair. Like let's say the human artist yeah. is actually good at what they do. Why is AI beating why is AI beating them? You know what I mean? Like I understand the concerns around AI. When it comes to, like, understanding stealing. Of the AI. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say my understanding of the AI is that's supposed to take like parts of like like parts of art from like well I guess like either popular or well renowned artists maybe take like pieces of each and then and try to build something following the description you type into the thing to you know create an AR drawing. Well they come it gives the you, source like, a rough sketch of what it thinks you want. The source of the AI's components when it generates an image is unknown. I mean, you can pick out certain things because it takes from anywhere, right? Like a lot of people tried to recreate uh, or generate something similar to that famous Liefeld drawing of Captain America <laughs> with the barrel chest. <laughs> and uh, I mean, obviously, we know that's a that, that's like a spoof of Rob Liefeld's work it's because like it's so distinct. But mm. it it can do things like that, but you can't. You, we know we know where it comes from. So if you try to sell that, people are gonna see right fucking through it. You know what I mean? Like there's a way to prevent your work from being stolen, and part of it. That's why artists and writers sign their shit. That's why they sign it. Like, you know what I mean? And it's it can't be copyrighted what do y'all think either. Of, so. uh, Go ahead. What do y'all think of uh like music, like songs that are done with like AI voices? Living and like deceased uh singers, those. Hmm. Yeah. Um. I don't think you can sell that either, to be honest. But like, if we're doing like YouTube video content, and like uh writing your own scripts, and the only thing you're using is an AI voice, I don't really see a problem with it. Because we were just talking about those uh those videos where you have Trump, Biden, and Obama playing fucking video games <laughs> together. Those shits are hilarious. I love those. I love They're, those. <laughs> I mean, obviously, someone's writing those jokes, and then they're uh, they're using mm-hmm. the AI voice to dub over it. Like, I think that's fine because fair use still exists, right? There's a difference between like fair yeah. use and then just stealing somebody's work. Like, there's a there's a clear difference. Right. Mm-hmm. 
But yeah, I don't. There's this dude called Glorb. He's an artist that uh, basically blew up making like raps with the SpongeBob characters. And I'm not even gonna lie, this shit slaps. I, I've been listening to. <laughs> yeah, they're, it's, they're, they're actually pretty good, <laughs> <laughs> bro. Bro, Dankton, Dankton is a monster, bro. I was I listened to all of the tracks he put out with Plankton. I'm like, oh my god, this shit is actually unironically good. Like this shit started out as a joke, <laughs> and this motherfucker Plankton grew into a savage. Like it's actually good, bro. Like I'm not, <laughs> it's it's so good, bro. Like, but yeah, um, yeah, that's my opinion of AI. Like I I believe that if you're someone who is good at what you do, you have nothing to fucking worry about. You just don't. You don't. Mm-hmm. A machine couldn't. A machine couldn't replicate what you can do one to one anyway. Especially if you have a very distinct style. So, especially for writing, art they have a better argument. Writing they fuck no. Like the machine's not doing that. They can't. They can't replicate. They can't do it. <laughs> they can't do it. You know it's funny you say that because I heard that Hollywood is actually like, actually implementing AI scripts now. <laughs> 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 Wait, <laughs> I think they're actually going all in on it. No, dude, I gotta see this shit. I have to see. I have to see it. I have to see this shit. <laughs> if they release the world's first AI generated show, I will be there with fucking bells on, bro. I have to hear this. I have to. <laughs> I want to know. I want, bro, if they're doing this shit, no, one rule no editor, no proofreading, none of that shit. Release the, <laughs> release the footage. <laughs> All AI. Matter of fact, I want an AI editor. That's what I want. I want an AI proofreader and editor. I want Grammarly on the scripts. I want. <laughs> I want the whole thing. Grammarly. They better not have no human interaction with this shit. If they do it, I swear. I want. I want. I want to be there, bro. Oh, uh, fuck. Uh, I mean, oh, the article. The AI paragraph. Yeah, you were on that. Yeah, it's kind of long. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll speed through this. Hold on. Cause I do want to get to the publishing and then the uh, the final topic too. Uh, where was I? Oh yeah, asking for better pay and stability for writers, restricting the use of artificial intelligence in writing, and improving pay and residuals for streaming content. What? How is that what? gonna work? They're not making any. Never mind. We already been over this. They're broke. Something that has significantly fallen behind <laughs> since the introduction of streaming. For television, the WGA is focused on ensuring that writers' rooms continue to work in a way that best serves writers and the shows themselves. They clearly do not give a fuck about serving the shows. They, they don't care. If they did, they would they would give people what they wanted out of these shows. But, you know. Over the past several years, writers' rooms have gotten much smaller as the number of episodes ordered per season has declined. In the past, on broadcast they television. Mean literally? What do you mean? Oh, writers' Does rooms have gotten like, smaller. <laughs> Maybe <Yeah. laughs> be both. Like, what are they gonna start? Are they gonna start putting them in cubicles now? Like, what? They're gonna start putting them in broom closets full long. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> the way shit is going. <laughs> in the past, you ought to bro- be in the janitor's closet. <laughs> You're late. I'm not paying for those. Anyway, <laughs> in the past on broadcast <laughs> television. Most shows have been between 12 to 24 episodes, but now it's coming for shows industry-wide that have only 6 to 10 episodes. This means fewer writers being hired into the room, sometimes omitting roles for lower-level writers. Writers working on a 6-episode show are only working in writers' rooms for 2 to 3 months and are paid per week. Oh, my God, bro. What is the average? Yeah, what is the average? I know they make bank, bro. The average pay for them per week is high, bro. It's so high. Just to, to get paid weekly doing this, bro? My God, bro. I don't even want to mm-hmm. look up the number. If you, can get a, the hourly wage? if you can get a number, you, you, you go get it. But I'm going to continue reading. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to read this whole thing because it's kind of long. And I think we've already gotten gotten to the point. So I'm going to... Matter of fact, hold on. Let me skip to why residual is important. Writers are paid for writing scripts, but they are also paid residuals after their work uh, their work airs on television. But with streaming, studios have not been held to the same standards as cable regarding residual payments. When streaming first started, residuals weren't fought for because it hadn't been proven what streamers would be profitable. Uh, what stream that streamers would be profitable? Excuse me. But now the profitability has been proven. The WGA is seeking fair streaming residuals. I mean, what does that mean, though? Okay, for example. My bad. It moved. For example, a writer of Abbott Elementary shared that. Anyway, I'll pick up where I left off, but <clears throat> but everyone dipped. 
<laughs> Damn it. Um, yeah, you said that they make like sixty-eight thousand dollars. Sixty-five a year, like thirty-eight. Sixty-five. Oh. <clears throat> Roughly, yeah, or like thirty, thirty-one, thirty-one dollars per per hour. I remember hearing something crazy. Go ahead, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. That's why I was so shocked. I'm like, I mean, what? Really? <laughs> Go ahead. You about to say something? I was just gonna. I was gonna say. I mean, to me, where I'm standing right now, that sounds that sounds like really good pay. I did not. No, have, it is. None of this. But I expected. I'd probably be wanting to sign up with them. No, it's it, it is good pay, but I expected more from like a Hollywood writer is what I was saying. Like, you know, like but anyway, um, we, we I guess we'll get into the AI discussion. You know, uh, why is there so much discussion about AI? Whether you're a fan of AI technology like chat, chat, <laughs> chat, CCP or not, writers have expressed <laughs> significant concerns. <laughs> of how the AMPTP could choose to use AI in the near future and how that would affect script writing. The WGA is asking that AI can't write or rewrite literary material, can't be used as source material, and MBA covered material can't be used to train AI. The AMPTP rejected this and instead offered the host yearly meetings to discuss the ban. (laughs) 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 Yearly meetings to discuss advancements in technology. Aside from the obvious issue of writers losing jobs because of AI, which, again, I, if you're a good writer, I just don't see it happening. A machine. Why do they think a machine would be able to do that? I just want to know. Like, are they that out of touch? Are they that out of touch? They're afraid, just, man. They're, they're scared. No, no, no. I'm. No, not the writer. Well, yeah, the writers, them, I, I just don't think they, they're as good as... I don't think they think very highly of themselves in the case of the writers, but I'm talking about like the 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 corporations that that hire them. Like, why do they? Why are they so sure that a machine could replicate? Well, maybe it could replicate them, but like, why would why, why would they think a machine could replicate like a good writer? You know what I mean? Like, how? Why? I don't get it. Um, let's see. There's also concerns that could be something. You know, there's good. Things. Connected to like I don't know, uh, shit, those driving cars, for example. That's a lot different than. Well, I, I don't know. Maybe it could be fairly different. I mean, we're talking about like decision making and stuff like that. Um, I mean, I don't know. I'm just kind of throwing something out there. It could be something that they're looking at that's in the future or something like that. I don't know. I'd be interested to know the thought process. A little bit of credit, maybe. I would be interested to hear the thought. Maybe they have some. I just want to know. Like, what What would... I just want to know. Yeah, yeah. Um, it says... Yeah. Um, da, da, da. Aside from the obvious issues of writers losing jobs because of AI, there's also a concern about studios using AI to create an initial draft and that a writer would then be, <laughs> then be hired to rewrite something that studios believe would save them money. Um, writers I mean, are also pushing back again. Go ahead. I was going to say, I mean... But isn't that what would happen? They would just hire a writer to fix the errors of the GPT? <laughs> yeah, so an AI would create an initial draft, and then a writer would then be hired to rewrite something that studios believe would say them. I'm not even going to lie. I know why I wouldn't go for that, because nine times out of ten, what the AI spits out is going to be ass. Like, it's just, it's just what it is. Like, it's just what the AI makes up is going to be ass. And then I'd be like, yeah, this is garbage. Uh, can, can I just rewrite the story from scratch? And if the studio says, no, you cannot rewrite the story from scratch, you have to write the robot story, I'm I, I'm not going for it, bro. <laughs> I'm probably not going for it. I'm I was going to say, I mean, if you were there, I feel like you would just be like, <clears throat> yeah, can I just write it all myself? <laughs> Yes, that's exactly what I would do. I would be like, yeah, this is terrible. I'd at least read it. 
I'd at least read the shit and be like, yeah, this is terrible. Can I just make some up? <laughs> like, this is god awful. <laughs> I mean, essentially, that would still be giving them work. But but generally speaking, when it comes to creative jobs, people do it for more than just the work. They do it because there's passion involved and it brings them purpose. So, no, I would not want the secondhand drivel of a fucking machine. I wouldn't. And now I'm so, I'm starting to sound like Will Smith and I Robot. Like like I hate robots or some shit. I don't hate robots, <laughs> but I'm just like not. I hate robots. I'm not. I'm not doing this. Robots aren't human. You know what I'm saying? They're just not. <laughs> Writers are also pushing. <laughs> Robot lives matter. <laughs> Writers are also pushing back against the idea <laughs> that AI could give notes on scripts drafts or that they could be asked to utilize AI for I would never do this though I just wouldn't <laughs> I wouldn't do this I wouldn't uh, I might use AI to write an essay that shit that's already happened um, Dr. Strange writer C, C. Robert Cargill expressed this on Twitter earlier this week saying the immediate fear of AI isn't that us writers will have our work replaced by artificially generated content are, are you sure is that we will be underpaid yeah, to rewrite like that track? <laughs> so he knows what's up is that we will be underpaid to rewrite that trash into something we could have done better from the start. <laughs> he knows what's up. Robert Cargill knows what's up. He, this is exactly what the fuck I just Robert. said. Is he, wait, I have a question about Robert. Is he a writer from like the first movie or the second movie? The first movie. He's the Bandit, first right? one. Oh, I hope First I don't movie. think he wrote that. Oh. Did he? Did he write that? Did he write the? Did he write uh, Multiverse I, of Madness? I hope not. I don't given think his so, statements, no. I don't think so. Given his statements, I'm pretty sure he wrote the first one. Cause this is some shit. This is what I'm talking about. I know the language of people who think highly of their work, bro. Like this is exactly what the fuck I was thinking. Like <laughs> you know, who the fuck would want to? Who would want to rewrite some shit and AI spits at him? Who? Especially if you've read AI generated stories before, like they're not good. <laughs> we'd, we'd be underpaid to rewrite that trash into something we could have done better from the start. Exactly. I understand that one. This is what the WGA is opposing at the studios uh, and the studios want. I can understand that part. I'm just not, if I'm them, I'm not doing that shit either. I'd rather just write my own shit at that point. I'd rather just write my own shit. Um, We've already talked about how the WGA would affect current television series, so we don't have to read that part. Um, what I really wanted to talk about, because this article does go on into the things that don't really matter to the audience per se, even though this article does claim that it will affect audiences in the future, even though the only aspect being affected is being spared from this fucking slop y'all keep producing. Anyway, uh, <laughs> next. <laughs> the next topic is going to be... This is going to be the death of traditional public uh, publishing. Um, the death of tradition. Yeah, written by Carol Brown. Y'all know Carol. Soups. You, I'm pretty sure you know. Oh Carol. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She wrote this because uh, you know she she she's written novels. She writes novels, and as an independent, she's been detailing. Yeah, uh, they're available on her website. We actually have a I link know, for it in the. Uh, oh, gee. <laughs> you can order it from her website, I'm pretty sure, but I don't know. Um, anyway, she's been detailing the. She's been detailing the. Uh, the death of traditional publishing, and we'll get into it after I read a little bit of the article. I don't want to give too much away, but it says traditional publishing is dead. Traditional publishing has lost some of its charms over the years with self publishing being touted as the better option by more and more authors. Some are asking if traditional publishing will be around much longer at all. Let's explore some facts I uncovered while researching this question. The changing world of publishing. We've seen a significant shift in how authors publish their books in recent years, especially in self publishing. The majority of the appeal for some writers, excuse me, <clears throat> is the control and pace at which they can release their works. Ten years ago, self-publishing was thought of as a last resort for writers who couldn't land an agent or publishing deal. Self-publishing has morphed into a popular option for many writers who now control more rights and earn more money than ever before. 
with the advent of social media and YouTube and things like that, yeah, it, especially when you have like Kickstarters and people like Brandon Sanderson can oh, make a fucking uh, multi-million dollar uh, <laughs> book campaign. Go ahead. Oh wait, wait, I, I I just realized I just realized something, guys. So another reason why I don't I think people didn't why people always uh just sign the contract you know to sign themselves is because they didn't have the internet back then like what if that was the reason why like everyone always kind of figured uh you know just go to new york publish publish find a publisher in new york or go to hollywood well, yeah you know get a job there yeah they had they no choice the they didn't have the, the, the they didn't have they didn't have the tools to like just start it all themselves and it well, took, like, I, I, you, I like, guess they had some choices. It took a couple of, of decades, but now they now everyone's waking up and realizing, oh wait, I get to do it myself now. <laughs> I mean, they had some choice. Uh, when you look at past authors, um, a lot of them get their start publishing short stories for local newspapers, uh, comic strips, and things like that. So they had some choice, um, especially if they were to be discovered. There were some options, but a lot of people just wanted to moved to New York because that's where the largest concentration of publishers were. So like it wasn't impossible, but like you know, they they they'd have a better shot if they went there. It makes perfect sense. Um so yeah, now with the fucking social media, they you know re you really don't have to do that. And even if you want to uh get traditionally published, um a lot of your creative freedom is limited, which is some of the things she goes into in this article. We'll see why here in a second. Um, da, da, da. Uh, I'll start it 10 years ago. 10 years ago, self-publishing was thought of as a last resort for writers who couldn't land an agent or publishing deal. Self-publishing was mo has morphed into a popular option for many writers who now control more rights and earn more money than ever before. What was once considered a taboo practice is now commonplace. It's estimated that nearly 300,000 new titles are published each year through self-publishing services. It's clear publishing is no longer what it used to be. Whether you're opting for traditional publishing or going your own way with self-publishing, there are some issues you should be aware of. Let's look at both sides of this hot topic and make an informed decision about, about your next steps. We'll discuss what options are available to you, why they matter, and which route will lead you toward success. Let's talk about traditional publishing versus self-publishing. While there is much debate surrounding these two book production methods, one thing is sure, neither is better than the other. I, I would, well, she knows more about this subject than me, but... I mean, I, mean, there's I, I a think lot. she's just, you know... No, no, I think she means uh, this statement here, but I'm disagreeing slightly because I know there's a lot more inherent risk with self-publishing, but once you have an established fan base, you're not really tied to anyone except your fan base. So, um, mm -hmm. that's the only reason why I would say self-publishing is definitively better than traditional publishing, especially nowadays when we, uh, when we think about the things we'll get into here in a second. Uh, they serve different purposes for different authors, artists, businesses. Now let's dive deeper. Let's break down each method. Whether you're seeking publication from a large publishing house Is or there? printing your work on demand. Hello? Can you hear me? Soups. I didn't. I, did you cut off? I didn't. I can't hear you. Here, I don't hear venom though. He's probably gone. Yeah. But like he's in the stream. Wow, I'm mom. Sorry. And it wow. says he's talking on on YouTube, but I don't hear uh. him talking to, you know, to us. Wow, my mic audio was muted in the background. Um, did I cut off? Which part did I cut off at? Cut off uh, when we were talking about um. Uh, the self-publishing um, fan base, uh, why you said it was a better option. Yeah, because once you have your own fan base, which is easier said than done, you're not really tied to a publisher. You can, you're can, you only tied to your fan base. Um, da -da -da. 
Yeah, I, I think I left off here. Whether you're seeking publication from a large publishing house or printing your work on demand, also known as PLD, here are some pros and cons to consider when deciding whether to pursue traditional publishing or go it alone with self-publishing. Pros and cons of both publishing methods. When selling yourself for traditional publishing, you rely on agents, editors, selecting works to match publishers' goals. However, that doesn't mean self-publishing is a walk in the park. With print-on-demand services like CreateSpace and In Ingram Spark, both of which are owned by Amazon, anyone can publish and sell books that look just as professional as those produced by major publishing houses. And you don't have to pay out an agent's commission or wait months for it to all come together. Here are some pros and cons to both approaches. Traditional publishing pros. Accessibility. Big name publishing houses sometimes have open calls or contests looking for new work. If your writing has what they're looking for, there's no need to query an agent, send your manuscript directly through their submissions portal. Once accepted, you'll be assigned a publishing professional who will guide you every step of the way. Money and rights. As with any significant decision, it always pays to do your research. Although many smaller presses don't pay royalties on books sold, meaning money is only made when books are bought. Some larger publishers, such as Random House, offer advances due as due at signing and usually equal anywhere from one to five thousand per book sold. It may take years for most authors to recoup their fees. <clears throat> However, Several large publishing houses also offer royalty structures where authors earn 6 to 15% of each copy purchased. A traditionally published author can reach millions of readers worldwide if all goes well. Subsidiary rights. One benefit to working with traditional publishing is turning over subsidiary rights such as audio recording and movie production to your publisher. While self-published works must depend solely on sales revenue, publishers often license audiobook versions, foreign translations, film adaptations, etc. So although you might not earn income via these mediums while your book is still in print, they can help generate revenue down the road. Experience and expertise. Working with a publisher means accessing their network of editors, agents, distributors, marketeers, etc. rather than doing everything yourself. Publishing contracts aren't one size fits all. Each contract varies based on factors like the type of book, fiction versus nonfiction, length, number of pages needed for publishing purposes, advanced given or requested by author, and so forth. Self-publishing requires you to learn how things work behind the scenes, but working with a publisher means having someone available to answer questions along the way. Book design and editing. While self-published authors typically hire their designers, printers, marketers, etc., some publishing houses handle those services themselves. Hiring professionals results in higher quality content across all platforms, but it does come at a cost. Traditional publishing cons, which I think is going to be the rub for me or was the rub for me when it came to being traditionally published. Gatekeepers. When you submit a manuscript to a publishing house, you essentially pay to play because you'll likely encounter gatekeepers who want to see your credentials and judge your quality. Even if you've been writing for years, landed a multi-book deal with another press, and happened to hit it big right away, you might get turned down by traditional publishers simply because they don't care about what you have to say. Rights and legal issues. The thing about selling rights to publishers is you can't get them back. Many writers sell their books without understanding what they're giving up or what it'll mean for future deals. For example, let's say you sell your novel for $10,000 for a $10,000 advance. Later, you decide to try self-publishing. You won't make a cent off additional book sales since your rights have already been sold. Unless you negotiate for all requests to revert to you after a certain period. It's generally best to think long and hard before entering a contract with a publisher. Longevity. While traditional publishing can be seen as an insurance policy for your books, once your book is out in stores, it's out of your hands. If sales are slow or something happens between author and publisher, they have all the power and control. In the end, for decades, traditional publishing has dominated publishing and presented significant benefits to its authors. But as technology continues to advance, self-publishing is becoming a much more viable option for writers looking to get their work out into the world. While we're not suggesting that traditional publishing is dying, it's certainly not. It's important to keep an eye on where things are headed and how best to prepare your manuscript for success. Excuse me, success. Next week, I'll do a more in-depth comparison between the two publishing options. I look forward to sharing that with you. Major thanks to those who joined my Patreon. This support helps me a lot and makes it possible for me to keep doing what I love, writing. If you would like to confirm I know what I am talking about when it comes to this writing stuff, I have several stories out with the most recent one being fine print and quarantine with my avatar. 
and this is her uh, subscription box for your email. So, um, let me see. Did she do the, hmm. Where's the pros and cons of, where's the pros and cons of self-publishing? Damn, I don't think that's in this one. Um, how much story did, did Eric did rip the, no, I mean, like, uh, how much, like, not, like, story did he, did he already do before, before he started selling? Like, did he do the whole story already? That'd be insane. That's, that's why, that's why he's, that's why he's, he's pulling. Go ahead. Wow. Well, I was just going to say, you know, Tupac was asking if he had already written the whole story and everything. And um, that's why for um, that's why he's so focused on trying to get back to writing, you know, because he hasn't written everything out already, you know. And to your point, he has the Bible, you know, and the roadmap of where he wants to take this, the, the story. But as far as, like, writing is concerned, no, nah, he hasn't finished that. Wow. You know, I still... <laughs> yeah, uh, Yaira and uh, and uh, what are they called? Alpha, Alpha, Alpha Patrol? Is that what they were called? Alpha Core. Alpha Core. Yeah, Alpha Core. yeah, that's what it was. Alpha Core. Yeah, that's. What it was. So okay, back but to yeah, the self-publishing um, traditional publishing. Um. Yeah, so we laid out the cons. Most of it is logistical, like as Viz just laid out. Like if you're if you're the creator. Um, when you're first starting your company, you're gonna have to be away from your seat of power, so to speak. Uh, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to wear a bunch of hats. The biggest pros to the to the publisher is that they handle a lot of the back end stuff for you. But the pros mm. with being a self published person is that once you get all the logistical stuff sorted out, you make the rules. Like that's the biggest pro of being a self publisher, um, and that's. That's why, personally, I think it's better. Like, obviously, it's hard. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying it's less difficult. I think it's better because you maintain 100% of your properties. Um, but I get some I people are willing to, to, of, to give away a piece of their... Go ahead. I was going to say, I think it's just a, a, a thing of uh, learn how learn the logistics of it, you know. How do you do all of this? How do you mail all the books yeah. out? How do you print it all out? How do you design the cover yourself? Or, and if you're in, like, let's say for novel writing, if you want to do, like, a drawing, like, in the chapters, like, in drawings in the books or, sim like, with symbols, how do you do all that? <laughs> well, if you're not artistically inclined, you have to hire an artist to do it for you. Um, yeah, that's just kind of how it goes. Whatever you can't do... If you can't learn it in an appropriate amount of time, you just have to outsource. This is how it goes. Um, when it comes to being self-published, go ahead. I was saying, still want to see Rip. Oh, release the Eric sketch. <laughs> I want to see that, bro. Release the Eric sketch. I want to see it. That needs to be a goal, bro. Release the Eric sketch. needs to make that a, a fucking stretch goal. I want to see it. Release the Eric, the release Eric sketch, the bro. I want to see it. Release the ripple cut. Alright, a hashtag in this comment section. Release the ripple cut in this comment section. Oh, no, it's the Eric sketch. The Eric sketch, like his old sketches for the. No, no, no. I'm, I'm kind of. I'm, I'm referencing the, the Snyder cut. You know when people were making. Oh, the Snyder cut. Oh, D. I'm saying release the ripple oh, yeah, cut. Yeah, Snyder cut. <laughs> The reason why I'm bringing this up is because that's not okay. The gatekeeping and all the cons you saw is not the only problem with publishing. A lot of the reason why it's not conducive for any creative person to go into traditional publishing right now is because they're not really concerned with new ideas. They're not concerned with original IPs. They want shit that's going to make them guaranteed money, which if you're someone who's already like if you're somebody who is an independent and you're already a successful person, you're not going to want to be traditionally published anyway. So the only people this is really hurting are up-and-coming writers who who have no resources to 
to to you know self publish, which is why. I mean, if you don't have the resources, I mean, you, you might as well try to build a following and, you know, uh, market yourself, even if it's just in the meantime of trying to get picked up by, by a publisher. Because, like, you, they have all these requirements now uh, when it comes to, uh, let me just say it's in relation to, like, the ESG type of stuff. And if you don't want to put that in your story, then too bad like you're not going to be picked up by a publisher if you're not trying to you know what happened with the riot with the riot and verse soups you know what i'm talking about like if you're not trying to put that type of stuff in your books they're not going to want to pick you up uh, you know? so um, oh man Charles and Paulo the reason that relates having him denounce his fans for calling out that actress who didn't look anything like annabeth that shit hurt me bro that was a long and time ago too. the reason why oh, this hurts that, the landscape of The reason why this hurts the landscape as far as storytelling is because the only thing we're going to get forever is fucking sequels. Like, you, you see this even in gaming. There's been very few original IPs coming out of these AAA studios. It's all been sequels, remakes, and remasters. Like, this is what entertainment is looking like because it's lost its soul. The only soul left is with independent creators. That's it. Like if you're if you're someone who's truly inclined to write or draw or or if you're someone who's shit, even producing film, it does you way more good if your focus is entertainment to just try doing it yourself. I mean, obviously it's gonna incur a significant amount of risk, but like if you don't wanna be risk controlled the by these companies because it seems like I mean, yeah, it seems like more and more they're not really willing to ha give anyone complete creative control over a project. And that hurts them more than it helps them. Like, they, But they don't care. <sighs> Is, I mean, what, what do y'all think of that? Like, I'm trying to say, like, it just it just hurts to see, like, Especially when it comes to like authors like that you grew up reading with, and then and you see them just kind of adapting this kind of stuff, like these kind of tactics. Like no wonder people are gonna turn away from the yeah, traditional publishing. Wanted... No wonder people are gonna turn away from the... Yeah, and they're telling the fans they're wrong for noticing, which leads into the next segment about Starfield because this is what we have to look forward to. In the near future, and it's not just oh video boy. games. Hang on, let me find this because this, oh yeah, there <laughs> uh, we go. Oh boy, they, they actually reference, they ref, yeah, they reference as in this uh article, by the way. And I, I'm tempted to play the rant, I think I'm going to. It's 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 pretty short and it's hilarious, so um, to be honest with you, I was just trying and to look for an true. article that wouldn't lock me out through yeah it wouldn't lock me out through a paywall but uh it says here i'm still gonna get spammed with ads i'm sorry starfield gender controversy yeah, some gamers go viral and face ridicule <laughs> over extreme reactions to pronouns <laughs> oh boy Top. starfield a new game <laughs> a new game developed by bethesda game studios that's set to release this week lets players select their own pronouns including they them which has provoked some extreme reactions from video game streamers and online ridicule and memes from others who feel the pronoun selection isn't a big deal. Key facts. Starfield, a first-person role-playing game set in space, is playable on PC and Xbox Series... Why? why? Oh, what the... <sighs> whatever. No. Walk away in the character. <laughs> no. Them, sure. like... Yeah, whatever. We, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, it's not that. It's like that. The, this part don't matter. We know our system is coming on. We know the pronoun shit. The option has provoked anger from some streamers, including Heels versus Babyface, a streamer with 344,000 YouTube subscribers <laughs> who went viral on social media for an expletive-filled rant in which he laments that Bethesda Game Studios inserted their ideology into everything we love, which he didn't say that about Bethesda. They intentionally took him out of context. He was saying that about entertainment in general. Um... I, I hate like the, the latest game like, that his seen, rant gets like, oh, I'm just purposely saying, like, I hate misconstrued, that his yeah. Rant, yeah, purposely misdirected, and that's why you get all these people, like, I've even had conversations with people online 
where they end up getting that, oh, what's the big deal kind of take because his rank gets misconstrued as just being, you know, F them pronouns. When it's like so much bigger than I mean, that. the people... I mean, the people who uh, don't see it as a big deal just haven't been paying attention. They're either, they either haven't been paying attention or they're being disingenuous because um, the pronoun thing is indicative of other things. Um, and people have been coming up with several fallacious and disingenuous arguments regarding the pronoun thing all the way down to it's basic human English, which like that's just that's just gaslighting, bro. <laughs> Like when when we when we when we yeah. talk about going to a character creation selection screen and having the game have you choose your pronouns, which is some normal people don't get to do, then like you know full well what we're talking about. It's it's obviously preferred pronouns because you get to choose them, and that's and that's mm -hmm. that's clearly ideological. Like that, it's clearly ideological. And everyone who wants to argue against it. Just type in preferred pronouns in Google and see how many academic institutions disagree with you on the f on on this uh, on this premise. It's clearly it's a big deal if it's being pushed in like academia. We're caving in into the pronoun thing. I mean, yeah, that's what I'm saying. They, I'm, they, okay, when I say they disagree with them, it's for the people who say it's not a big deal. Like academia disagrees with them, it's clearly a big mm -hmm. deal. It, I mean, if it's if it wasn't a big deal, why is it that Nexus Mods is gonna ban anyone who wants it not in the game, right? It, it, they said people are like creating these arguments against escapism. You know, this rem you know this reminds me of I I just remember this because of a comment section I saw a while back. But ma back when the Spider-Man uh, PS4 was on uh, was being done on PC, there was a mod mm -hmm. that. Uh, replaced, uh, I think it was like a was it pride flags? I think, like, no, those rainbow flags with like yeah. American flags, yeah. They changed and them they got to... booted off, they you got wanna, banned. You want to know the funny, you want to know the funny thing about that mod? It, it's barely a mod, the only thing it did was enable the Middle Eastern localization, which means when they released the game in the Middle <laughs> East, pride flags weren't in the game. So that shows you how much they really give a fuck about, <laughs> about, about <laughs> these groups that they're promoting. He didn't even like. He didn't even uh, take. He just enabled a certain localization. He didn't even do a whole bunch of work for that. You know what I mean? Right? Like it's just when you look at the landscape of gaming throughout the years and the variety of petty reasons people go into impassioned rants about anything when it comes to the hardware on the new console versus the amount you're paying for it. And then you look at as uh, who's clearly uh, lamenting an issue that's much deeper than graphic fidelity. You look at all, you you look at every gamer in the modern day like they're who's arguing against him like they're a fucking hypocrite. What happened to the customer being able to to complain about anything? You know what I mean? If people complain about the most trivial shit in, uh, in video games that they don't like. And they've come up with worse reasons for why they won't buy a game as as a lot of them narrative reasons, um, which is fine. I'm not saying you shouldn't complain about the entertainment you receive because no one's owed your money, right? But the thing is, I'm trying to figure out why channels who make an entire living giving rants about everything, including shit people don't care about generally, are getting on to ass for having a rant about something. Like, they're all just it's hypocrites. <laughs> It's yeah, and it's so messed up to see too, cause like um, that one channel that was trying to make a meme out of uh, out of ass, like the Act Man, I think, wasn't he trying to make a meme out of him to try to like kind of what's the what's the what's the phrase for it? That he was trying to make him look like a hypocrite, the word? but yeah, defame. Yeah, defame him. Yeah, he was trying to defame, defame him with that, and I'm just like, really? Like you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> I mean, it, it didn't work. It didn't work because it was two different messages. Like, even if you watch the video, you can clearly see that mm -hmm. both contexts are different. So I didn't even understand what he was trying to do. <laughs> I didn't understand what he was trying to point out. He was trying to, he was trying to pull one over him. That's what he was trying to do. I know, but, like, it was a poor attempt. Um, this is They're good. Uh, like okay, I just so hate seeing like the Friday night type guys like getting like 
you know, trying, well, people going after them just just because they decided to, you know, speak their mind. It's just, it's just... This reminds I mean, me of you're not allowed to follow those people in the first place. You're not allowed to speak your mind about the current day ideology it, because you'll be decried as a man child, even though Hogwarts legacy even though you just have a legit happens. Argument. <laughs> Hogwarts legacy was damn near yesterday. Like, not only did they complain about shit in that game, and it didn't even stop at them complaining about it, right? They they were doxing people. They were terrorizing the people. They're, yeah, I mean, no, it's not even that they were boycotting it. That's fine. Whatever you do within your own power is fine. You're a fucking consumer. They were trying to get people fired over that shit. They were calling people racist, sexist, bigots. They were compelling people to not buy the game. They they were doing shit like that. As is saying, I'm tired of this being in my video games. He didn't even call for anyone to boycott anything. He was just giving his opinion. Yeah. But they're allowed to go. They're allowed to go on Twitter, and and dox people, shame and mock them, and and try to expose them for daring to play a video game they wanted to while attaching labels to them that that are detestable. And they just do that. And for them, it's okay, but it's not even okay for you to give your opinion. It doesn't make any sense. Like, it, it went as far as certain streamers being so bitch-made that they were afraid of their audience and saying, oh, it's just not worth getting harassed and bullied. These, Those are the people <laughs> who are calling as a man baby, bro. The people who will harass and bully you for <laughs> daring to play a video game because an author that's attached to the IP is so-called a transphobe. Those are the people. That, that sounds like a Hassan Piker type of streamer, man. That's a, that sounds like that kind of. I mean, it, I mean, it was him. It was him. It wasn't just him. Well, it, it was, was actually him. him. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it was him. Oh my god, what a snowflake! I mean, it's just it's just silly. Like I don't even need to read the whole article. I think it's just we we pretty much made all the points we we need to now. I mean, I, I might as well just play the rant because he's not wrong. And anything he said in the fucking rent, you're ruining people's escapism. People just want to go. Uh, they want to take their mind off things that are happening in the happening in the outside world, and people are just coming up with all these fucking fallacious ass arguments to try and defend against it. Like everything is political, and it's like there, there's, there's something having be, political. Though. I mean, no, they're being disingenuous because there's something having political themes within its own world using its own type of language and the way it describes it and then there's literally opening a comic book and hearing shit about vaccines and the border crisis like real life shit there's a difference you no know, if like, i wanted to if i wanted to watch something with political themes i would just go watch legend of the galactic heroes because they, they at least like handled they, those political themes very well <laughs> In good entertainment, any political themes therein are left up to your own interpretation. But these motherfuckers don't believe in that. They wanna, they wanna beat you over the head with it and tell you expressly what it's about. And and it's not even in a balanced way. It's only their fucking ideology. No one else's. There can be only one. Pretty much. Oh, and if you've read that. Uh, people were bringing up this excerpt from the latest James Bond book. I don't want to read that shit, but <laughs> apparently it's really fucking bad. And it. Whoa, I, I haven't, I haven't heard. Yeah, you should look it up. It's, the it's pretty bad. Like it, it it's, it's so immersion that. breaking. It hurts. You can, you can almost hear the person who wrote it talking to you. Like it doesn't sound like a character in the book at all. But anyway, um, you know what, I actually you know what you a... just reminded me of, Venom? What? You know what you just reminded me of? What? When you said it sounds like the person is talking to you, or like, yeah. it's, it reminds me of this, uh, that uh, one obviously like scripted talk in um, the archives. That Miles Morales game. You do know what the game. archives are. You remember the, everyone started memeing on the exaggerated swagger? Oh, that wasn't in the game. That was a fucking, uh, that was a IGN review. No, no, it wasn't in the game, but it was a promotion video. It wasn't a promotion yeah. video, but it just, I just thought of like, okay, this gives me that kind of vibe. Swagger of a black teen. My God, bro. <laughs> he's never living. He's never living that down. 
You're never living that shit down. I'm never letting that joke go, man. I'm not. <laughs> But yeah, um, th oh yeah, the rant started uh, on part two of his start field gameplay, which like I think the first one's eight hours, this one's five hours. So basically, uh, ten and a ten or so hours into the gameplay is when he's he has this rant here because he's already seen so much in the game at this point. Again, it doesn't even matter. The f like even if it was just pronouns, he'd still be right because we've seen it in other places. So it would still be We've justified. Seen it for like what ten years but now. Like here's where the rant. Yeah, but the better part of a decade. But like here's where he actually rants at, in the, in part two of the uh, Starfield gameplay for early the access. Archives. If you it'll play. You know what the archives are, correct? Kind of lagging a bit on my screen. Yeah, it's lagging a Whoa. good bit. Let me see. Sorry, what did you say? I wasn't listening. You're whammon. <laughs> <laughs> the, the chat. You don't even look like he's having fun there. I love looking at the chat. I, I love looking at the chat. Dude. <laughs> I know, I know what that yeah, reference is. <laughs> what the hell is even that? <laughs> Sorry, what did you say? I wasn't listening. You're whammon. <laughs> Let's pretend that I don't have the slight. No, I don't care. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm gonna play along. Someone gonna... paid attention during that. No, I just don't care. So then you also <laughs> know that it's originally managed by the three major galactic players. Access to the archives is only granted in cases of dire. Oh, dire oh no, emergency. oh no, no, where's the video? No, 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 I, I'm lowering the fidelity to help out the. Hey, do you know what I love? Hey, Bethesda, Bethesda, Bethesda. Oi, cow, shut your fucking cake hole. Hey, Bethesda. Shit, here's the rant, though. <laughs> hey, Bethesda, Bethesda, I just want to say something to you. Bethesda, I just want to. Just wanna... I just want to say something to you, Bethesda. I just want to say a little, little something. There is nothing I love more. <laughs> Take my headphones off. Fuck that. Bethesda, there is oh, nothing oh, oh, the I love more off. than <laughs> to, to, to sit down, comfy chair, turn on my PC, fire up a brand new RPG, uh, uh, lose myself, think, oh my God, just think of this world. Just think of all the planets I can visit, all the immersive things that I can get involved with, all the fights. All the relationships, all the people I meet, all the places I go. I'm so excited to go there. And you know, I love nothing more than with all of that laid out in front of me. I love nothing more than to be dragged out at every fucking conceivable opportunity so you can fucking current day us. <laughs> Sorry, did you want to get immersed in our... Hang on. world yeah well guess what fucking pronouns fucking gender ambiguity fucking current day californian shit because that's all we fucking know because we're boring we're so fucking boring <laughs> we can't see past our own fucking reflection that's the level of our narcissism here at Bethesda Western Game Company. Fuck your immersion. Fuck you having a good time. Fuck you falling into a world and just getting lost. No, no, no. Current fucking day. <laughs> Fuck off. You're boring. You're fucking dull. You have nothing to say. You are a one hived mind twat waffle. That's all you fucking are. And you wonder why people are getting so fucking sick and tired. You take everything we love. Everything just works. All our <laughs> fantasies. All our escapism. <laughs> and you just can't help. Shovel your dog shit. Fucking crap. Ideology into everything, everything.
every single solitary fucking thing. I'll call about it. <laughs> bro, this this rant this rant resonated with so many people, bro. Like, I, it resonated with a lot. Yeah, of people it resonates. It echoes a lot of, of the sentiments that have been going on. Yeah, like we. we I mean, it just it just hits different when you've sat through several fandoms get eaten, eaten, eaten out, uh, destroyed <laughs> by ideological rot, right? Basically eaten, we, we, we've been poisoned, marble. Any, any of them work? No, I said, I said, I said, I almost said eaten out when you've seen several fandoms getting eaten out by, by, never mind. Anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> we've seen it with Marvel. We've seen it with DC. Hell, it even spread to fucking tabletop games. Now it's spreading to video games. We've seen it with movies, TV. It's fucking everywhere. And everyone who's who's gonna pretend that that's not the case is just gaslighting. That's all it is. They're just they're, they're just pissing on your head and telling you it's rain. Believe me, not my not uh believe me, not your lying eyes, bro. That's what they're doing. And you, and if you have the temerity, the brazen gall to notice. It's no big deal, bro. <laughs> it's just two weeks to slow the spread, bro. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> it's just a train car, bro. It's just a prank, It's just a train ride. <laughs> right, exactly. It's just a prank, it's bro. It's just like, a video game, bro. Here, like. <laughs> that, that shit. Mm. The appeal I to like the like, bro. Like, Everyone who shows up to say that they don't care just needs to leave the discussion. Like, because it's like, yes, you don't <laughs> care. I do. <laughs> so you can go away. Uh, Let the people who care say, have the discussion. Um, I like how this, like, that rant in particular, because, you know, as does, like, a lot of rants, a lot of reviews, for, like, shows and games. But that particular one is the one that blew up immensely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, because he went uh, like as he puts it, he went after the sacred cow. Oh, and by the way, this is what we have to look forward to in the event a writer strike ends. That that was the whole point of all the topics I picked throughout tonight's discussion, and to uh, encourage anyone who can to start creating independently and putting out their own shit. Because this is what we're looking at, bro. We're looking at writer strikes, which is sparing us from the fucking terrible writing they're already making. Uh, we're still subject to it for these game uh, from these gaming studios, unfortunately. But like, this is the type of shit we have to look forward to if they get either either get what they want or if they wise up and start making their own shit. That, that's what we have to look forward to, right there. This is what this is the type of shit that these publishers are looking for too. By the way, this is what they're looking for. They're looking for race, sex, ideology, religion. That's what they're looking for. They're not looking for entertainment. They're not. They're looking for the message. And that's what the whole point of his rant was about. This is the landscape of modern day storytelling in the fucking, uh, what's it called? In what is, in what is deemed the proper channels in the professional settings. That's what we're looking at. So why not get out there? Like you, if you're anybody like me, you pretty much have no choice at this point. Cause you're never going to, Whatever you knew in the past is never coming back. Like you just, you just have to make peace with it. The, the 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 best you can do is attempt to reshape the face of entertainment the best way you can. And if you can't do it, if you're not a particularly creative person, rally behind people that are. That's that's the best. That's the best you can do because they're not they're not interested in giving you what the fuck you want. They're just not. Yeah, because like, because. Like Marvel, like Marvel's not gonna be, you know, Sam Raimi Spider Man trilogy again, ever again. And as as much as I wished it would, like I still carry the profile pic on my on my thing because you know I'm, I'm always gonna hold a love for Marvel, but I'm never gonna I'm not gonna fool myself Dude. into trying to fall for those key cha those keychains the the key jingling Listen. tactics that they're gonna do after after No Way Home at this point. Uh. Member berries, bro. Let me tell you something. As much as I love Tobey Maguire and his performance as Spider Man, there is no conceivable way he should still be the GOAT, bro. There's no reason. 
There's no reason he should still be the best one. It do, it doesn't make any sense. It's been too fucking long. <laughs> it's been hey man. If there's one thing I learned about all these mediums, it's that the old ones hold the strongest. Viz, what were you saying? Oh no, I uh, unmuted my mic at the wrong time because I had a wall. Oh, it's 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 just background noise. <laughs> oh okay. It, it, dude, like it, it makes no yeah. sense. Speaking of member berries, man, they're, they're, they're trying to do it again in Star Wars. I'm just kind of sitting around looking at people like, y'all really go fall for this stuff again? <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I'm not going for it. Like, if it's not, if, if, if it's not some independently produced work at this point, or if, no, I, I mean, it's all dead to me at this point. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. But uh, ever since they brought back, um, what's his name, Hayden, to uh, play Anakin. Hayden Christensen. Yeah, in the Obi Wan series and everything, they have him in the Ahsoka series now, and I'm just kind of looking at people as this stuff comes out, and I'm just like, y'all really falling for this crap again? Like, come on, stop it! But the member berries. Oh yeah, Ahsoka's bad apparently. Yeah, Ahsoka's bad. Like everyone's been saying, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> y'all remember Hayden, right? Y'all remember Anakin? Y'all remember the Clone Wars? Just, just watching the erotics review. I remember. I remember. Do you remember? I remember. Fucking A, bro. Like, <laughs> the only way we're going to get new exciting projects. Jesus Christ, bro. But yeah, that, that was... That was pretty much the entire point of the three topics I, I brought. I brought forth, um, especially the start the Starfield controversy and how people don't want to accept that legacy fan bases are not accepting of this message that they've been pushing. They just don't want to. They don't want to do it. Like the only thing people are concerned with is the entertainment itself. But <laughs> that's it. But um, in the next couple minutes, we can wrap up the stream because we've gone through all our topics and we've been uh, it's eight oh five. It's five minutes after what I set the timer for. It's uh, it was supposed to go on for two hours. Next stream, um, I can't. I haven't decided whether or not I'm gonna do these once a week or once a month yet. Um, but I, one thing is for sure, uh. I'm not gonna have my internet cut out on me again because. I'm going to have my Wi-Fi yep. and my and landline at the sisters. same time next time. It doesn't, though. It never does this. But now I know better. I'm just going to have the Wi-Fi and the landline on at the same time. It, it don't even matter. I'm just going to do that. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> what, both of them are going to cut one out at the same time? One shall stand, one shall fall. That would be some shit, bro. Like, both of them just give out and do some bullshit. But yeah, um, I'm going to edit both halves of each stream together. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. But yeah, this the, was the Monkey's Paw episode. Of the Dead Air. Yeah, I'm going to edit out the Dead Air. Every, yeah, every dead stream air. we have like a, a major problem. Yeah, every stream we have like a major problem. I'm just going to edit. Um, but yeah, this was the <laughs> Monkey's Paw episode one. So this is the type of format you guys can look forward to, uh, referring to the audience and my two co-hosts. Like, it's always going to be topics y'all are familiar with because like we've all be, we we're all three of us are pretty much pop culture heads. Um, w w honestly, it's a misnomer because a lot of the culture we're into was unpopular at one point, but I guess now it's just pop culture. But you get what I'm saying, so. <laughs> And hell, and who knows? Maybe we'll start um, talking about independent projects that uh, these these guys are putting out. Whether it comes from uh, comic books, novels, and stuff like that, it's just good to have people informed about that too. Um, but I'll definitely continue to follow the writer strike and uh, any any entertainment that's actually good out there. I heard some good things about the One Piece show. My thing with it is that none of the characters look convincing to me, except for maybe Zoro, or is it Zolo? Well, the thing with One, One Piece, Piece is that 
Well, the thing with One Piece is that you cannot exactly rectify how the how a person is gonna look like the character because the way One Piece is drawn is so I know. goofy and out there that on purpose. So you're never gonna get that part. Yeah, that's right. why. <laughs> like, uh, I know that's why. It does, that's that's part of the reason why. You you first. Okay, I was gonna say. Uh, but from what I've heard, it's good because it carries the same energy. It carries the same like cheesiness, the corniness. Yeah, the everything spirit. that made One Piece like special at the start, at the spirit, and it also helps that. I believe it's because Oda, the manga author himself, is also involved with the show. I think that might have had something to do with it too. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. But that's part. Of, but the the fact that they can't replicate the characters accurately is part of the reason why I'm against most anime ad adaptations. Um, live action pretty much only works with characters that are realistically depicted in their art. You know what I mean? To me, because like I'm Roman never Kenshin. gonna look at the One Piece show. I mean, you could do a good Kenshin, like it's it'd just be like an Asian guy, you know. Well, no, but no, I'm but talking I mean, about like, like the, most like animation movies that have... of Kenshin. Kenshin, what Ashura or Roroni Kenshin? No, no, Roroni Kenshin, Roroni Kenshin. I didn't know there was a fucking live action of that. I had no idea. Bro, there's like five movies of, of Kenshin, of Veroni Kenshin. And they're really good, too. You know what? You know what? We can talk about that when uh, after I end the stream, because I, I need to know this now. But anyway, uh, whoever right, tuned right. in, thank you guys. Um, and uh, as far as the playback, it will be up, but I just have to edit out all the dead air and stuff like that. But um, this has been the Monkey's Pod Podcast. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.